Hey guys, this is Backdraft and welcome to another episode on the Symmetria server. This is episode number 25. Thank you so much for joining me today. So to start off this episode, it is time for another progress update on the city. So we have a couple more buildings that have popped up since last episode and a bunch more blueprints as well. So there are a couple more buildings behind the temple over here. Well, not buildings, but just a couple plots. I've also finished up a couple of the little hovels over there. These plots have been added. This plot right here has been added. And I'm going to continue on in this episode, plotting down a bunch more blueprints and maybe putting up a few more buildings. So the only new buildings that we have thus far are this right here, which I built on a couple live streams. And I kind of don't know exactly what to put in here yet, but I think it's going to be something along the lines of like a bank or something like that. Uh, but we will figure it out. There are a few buildings that we don't have furnishings for yet. And the other one is this right here, which I think was built by Jinx. I don't know for sure. Uh, Jinx was the only one who said that they were going to come over and build something in the city. But yeah, whoever built this, it is pretty, pretty cool. I love the buttons along the top. I love the flower beds. I love the awning, actually. That turned out really cool. Really, really nice build. So I can't wait to dig into the city some more and make some more progress on that. But there is one other thing that I'd like to get done in this episode that I've already started prepping for in the side of the palace over here. And that involves the micro farm area right down here. I have already hollowed out the area that we're going to need for it. So this is the official area for my micro farms. I already have the design going. And at the end of the area here, which I still have to hollow out, this is where we're going to put our vault. So earlier in this season I designed a redstone memory cell six digit combination vault that I have been dying to put on the server. I actually designed it to be put inside of the palace at some point, and I think it is finally time to do that. So the design involves a lot of sandstone of course of course a lot of sandstone which i have been able to gather up i'm still working on the rest of the material gathering for this area and as for the micro farms there's space for 10 micro farms in here right now i don't know what else we're going to put but we do have ideas for five of them we have the stone farm which we already have which is going to go in here the basalt farm is going to go over here and i also have a crop farm a flower farm and a cactus farm as well i think we might end up adding a chicken farm I don't know for sure, but yeah, this is definitely something we're going to do in this episode. But the very first thing I want to do is get all of this side of the interior of the city completely blueprinted out. I don't know if we're going to plot down any buildings yet. Uh, we might, we might depending on how I feel, but I want to get at least all of the blueprints down so that we know where all of the buildings are going to go. And I think we're going to kick this off early on in the episode with a third person time lapse just to get all the blueprints in price. Maybe I'll throw a couple buildings in there just to mix things up. But I hope you guys enjoy as usual and roll that music.
city is finally starting to take shape. Yuck. <laughs> I don't know what that was. That was like an excited growl that was supposed to be a cheer. I don't know, but we have half of the city already in progress and ready to be built up in terms of the remaining buildings that we have. So I hope you guys enjoyed that time lapse. That was a lot of fun. And I figured it would probably be easiest if I just started plotting out a bunch of the buildings and where they're going to go. Also, in case anybody else wanted to come over and do community building, it would kind of be obvious what uh, uh, what plots they could take and which ones were kind of already underway. So I plotted out all of the space in this side of the city. This little area right here, these, was that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little buildings, which are pretty much just little hovels or, or houses for the citizens of the city. These ones I end up building up. I just wanted to get a little bit more done in this episode, but it is looking super cool. Let's take a little fly down. There's nothing in these buildings right now. And of course, all of these other plots, we're going to get to them as we progress. But this is the only one that I've really kind of started with the interior. I really like uh, this uh, this doorway design. I just kind of came up with like some unique door designs on some of these buildings. This one's pretty cool. It, it definitely adds a little bit more to the build without making it look a little you know, a little bit over eccentric because these these aren't really supposed to look very fancy. They're just little houses that the everyday average Joe citizens of the city would live in. So in here, I just kind of built this little design for the uh, bunk beds in here. That's about it. The rest of them are all just completely empty, but we are going to furnish them. I'm probably going to get all of the rest of the buildings up and then we'll worry about doing all of the interior. Sometimes the interiors can take longer than doing the actual buildings. But yeah, I will keep you guys posted on the progress of the city. Let me know what you guys think of it so far. So I mentioned in the last episode that we are going to be starting up the Nether Hub and Nether Tunnel builds on the server. Two community projects that I've been looking forward to. And we actually are now in the process of doing the resource collection. And of course I wanted to do my part. There is still a lot of stuff that we need to do these builds. So I'm gonna get right into it. So we are now in the final stages of finishing up the nether tunnel resource gathering. There is a lot of resources that are going into this tunnel. Right now I am cranking out a bunch of nether quartz ore to get the quartz that we're then going to convert into quartz blocks and then eventually smooth quartz stairs I think is what is needed for the nether tunnel. On top of that I do have a lot of nether wart blocks left over from farming at the netherwood farm at the palace and of course a lot of blackstone and they are in desperate need of blackstone. I think I can cover them on the blackstone. Um, need about I think six shulker boxes of polished blackstone brick stairs. Definitely can help out there but I love helping out with the community projects, so let's get to going on the grind. So I'm now smelting up all of those quartz blocks so that we can get the smooth quartz and then turn it into smooth quartz stairs. And then beyond that, I have a couple shulkers right here that were given to me by my good friend Zavom on the server who is leading up the charge on building up the nether tunnels and speak of the devil there he is he has given me a bunch of TNT and bone meal so that I can use it over at the netherwood farm because we still need about six shulker boxes full of nether wart blocks and the netherwood farm actually cranks it out very, very fast. I think we get about a double chest of nether wart blocks per hour, if not even more. I don't know the rates exactly, but we're going to AFK over there for a while so that we can help out the community build. So I'm going to keep on cranking. All done with the quartz. So I've now landed over at the netherwood farm and it's time for a good old AFK session. Let's make sure we don't get blown up. Uh... <laughs> okay. Whew. It's not time for a good old AFK session at our trusty old friend over here. And of course, because, oh gosh, another one's coming down. <laughs> of course, because I'm just sitting here and staring, I have to break all of the blocks that I see. Efficiency purposes. Some of them are making it through, but that is okay. But yeah, so we're gonna have to AFK over here for probably a few hours because we need about three double chests or about six shulker boxes of the red nether wart blocks, which we are after for the nether tunnels. So yeah, I'm gonna do the AFK session and I will see you guys when we are all done. All right. 
Alrighty, we're all done with resource collection for our part in the nether tunnel construction. And here is what we ended up with. That didn't take too long. Plus we had some of it laying around in our storage anyway. So I'm glad to help out the community. So we ended up with six shulkers of nether wart blocks, which is super awesome. Of course, our nether wood farm cranks out a ton of these very, very quickly. We got that much in no time. Then through that quartz that we ended up mining, we got a about 19 stacks of smooth quartz stairs, which is super awesome. And then we ended up with uh, around almost four shulker boxes full of polished blackstone brick stairs, which were a big ask for this build as well. So yeah, I am glad that I was able to contribute to the community build. Let's get back to the base. So it is now time to do the micro farm slash vault area underneath the palace. So we have the whole area hollowed out minus the area for the vault at the end. But I have the design ready to go for this entire area. It involves a lot of sandstone, red nether brick, basically the same things that we've been using in the palette throughout the rest of the base. But I've done a bunch of resource collection. I also went to the shopping district during one of my live streams and just bought up all of the sandstone i think we have like six or seven shulker boxes of sandstone we're definitely going to use it all partially for this build we need at least two shulker boxes of sandstone to finish this area up down here and of course we're going to use the rest of it in the city building so i think we're going to do the micro farms as third person time lapse and then we'll do the skeleton for the vault in a third person time lapse and i will wire up the redstone once we finish up the actual cosmetic part of it and i will show you guys all of the details of the vault so I can try and explain to you exactly what's going on. Um, and if I fry your brains with redstone boogaloo, I apologize. But anyway, it's time to get started. I hope you guys enjoy. Let's roll that music one more time. enjoyed that time lapse we got all of the rooms done for the micro farms five of them currently have farms and the other five are empty where i'm sure we'll be building up future farms so we have cactus which is uh, 25 in there already not too shabby for a micro farm we have the crop farm over here we ooh, i never finished the ceiling in this one i'm gonna have to do that uh we have the flower farms over here and sorry about the noise from the carts there's a bunch of carts hidden underneath and i guess they're making noise because they're on rails we might be able to fix that but i don't know uh yeah i'll have to look at that later but anyway we have the stone farm over here and we have the basalt farm so far so the other farms i was thinking of potentially we can maybe build a chicken farm 
maybe melon and pumpkin. And then if we ever end up needing micro farms for anything else, we have extra rooms. So then of course we have the vault. So this is just the cosmetic part of the vault. Each of these pillars right here represents a digit in the six digit combination lock, starting from over here and working your way around. So I have a bit of the redstone in place already, pretty much nothing as of yet, but essentially, I have a whole redstone showcase video explaining how this vault works. It is my own design, uh, but essentially what it is, and sorry if I fry your brain if you don't really understand the redstone. Like I said, you can go watch the video if you want the redstone showcase video. Ooh, wrong button. But um, essentially what we have is we have uh, what are called redstone memory cells, which essentially remember a specific signal strength that are given to them. They then will feed into what's called a signal strength comparison gate. Essentially what you're saying is when you have a certain signal strength given off by the redstone memory cell So essentially once you flick the lever a certain number of times you're going to have the right digit and it will activate or deactivate a torch and Essentially each one of these observers are going to lead eventually into a torch once all three torches are deactivated That means all three numbers are entered into each of the cells or whatever and once all three are, of these are right and all three of the ones on our side are right the vault door will open and we still have to wire up the redstone for the vault door as well so i will get one of these done and then i'll try to explain everything to you guys once again sorry if i fry your brain with redstone nonsense so i've set up the redstone for the first memory cell and essentially what we have is every time we flick this lever we're going to light up the next redstone lamp so i'll flick it once first one comes on flick it again we get two essentially this just represents the digits so that's three four five etc all the way to nine and we can reset it either by hitting this button here also hitting the button in the center this actually will reset all six of them once they're all set up and then of course entering the room stepping on the pressure plates will also reset the digits so let me show you guys what we got going on behind the scenes it's kind of confusing but um it's really not that bad uh it looks kind of crazy this is like i said just one cell but it's really not too shabby so right here is the memory cell it's all controlled by this comparator right here so every time you flick that lever you're pulsing this redstone wire here to 15 which is adding one signal strength every time to this it's kind of conf it's it, it's kind of hard to, to explain i have the full explanation in my uh, redstone showcase video but essentially right now i have this thing set so that the number two is the correct digit for this memory cell so that essentially means once i enter two this torch will actually turn off so once all six of the digits are on the correct uh number then all six torches will be completely off and the door will open so let me demonstrate for this or demonstrate this for you guys right now so if i go back out here and I enter, for example, let's say we enter just one. So now the digit is one. Let's, oh, I stepped on the pressure plate. <laughs> uh, let's say, can I reach from here? Yep, so we got one. That means that this should not be off, and it is, it's still on. If I go to two, it should shut off because that would be the correct digit. So we're at two, let's check her out and it is off so that means we have a good redstone setup that also means that if we go to three or any other number let's just go to four for example it should also be off when this should work already and yes it does i'm sorry it should come back on if it's not on the corrected so it is now back on so it is working Alrighty, i have five more of these to wire up and then i will catch back with you guys when the whole thing is ready to go so i think we've got the rest of it all wrapped up and it's time for a test so the idea here is once i enter the correct combination for all six digits, the vault should open. We should also hear a little bit of a jingle that I added as well. All of the redstone is done. I'll show you guys in just a sec. I just want to test this out to make sure that the combination works. And for the record, since I am showing this on camera, I am going to change it after the fact so nobody tries anything sneaky on the server. So this one is 117 and then 3, 1, and 3. And there we go, it worked. I'm so excited that it worked. So we did have some trouble with the three x three piston door a little bit. 
and there was a couple small bugs here and there that we had to work out but we are all set with this vault so we're going to be putting some valuable stuff inside of it so of course if we step over the pressure plates or hit the central button all of the digits reset and the piston door closes up and the vault is sealed once again so the only way that the vault will open is if the correct combination is entered at any given point in time. If that combination is then changed and it is no longer the correct one, the vault door will close. It will only be open when the correct combination is entered in. So let me show you guys all of the redstone memory cells back here. It is a little bit bulky, kind of hard to show a little bit, but as you can see, this is how we have it set up. So we hollowed out this really nice area and it fits pretty good in here. We did hollow out a little bit more than we needed to. Essentially, the way that you set the combination is you put a select number of items into each of these chests, and that will determine the signal strength that each memory cell is looking for. So there's the three over here, and we have the three over here. So once the correct combination is entered, essentially what happens is this line will deactivate. And if we go up here, and when this line deactivates, it activates the piston door and opens it up and also toggles the jingle back here. So this was a lot of fun. It was nice to get into a really intensive redstone project. Let me know what you guys think of this. So finally, I'm also going to pose a challenge to everyone on the server, and I'm going to probably put this in our Discord as well. I'm posing the vault challenge. If anyone thinks that they can hack into my vault, I'm going to be putting some valuables in there. If you can hack into the vault without breaking any blocks or cheating or peeking at the combination or anything like that, no breaking blocks, no looking at the redstone, nothing like that. If you guys think that you can hack into the vault, then you can keep whatever you find inside of the vault. That is right once again for all you guys on the server. I pose the vault challenge to you. If you think you can hack into my vault to figure out the combination, then feel free to try. But I must warn you with six digits, one through nine, there's over a million possible combinations. But if you can figure it out and get into the vault, no cheating, like I said, you're free to keep whatever's inside of the vault. And for the record, I'm gonna show you guys right now, I'm gonna put a little bit into the vault. We have about 64 diamond blocks, four stacks of emerald blocks, and I think that's good for now. So let's enter the combination one last time, and I think we're going to pop all of this into the vault. And like I said, I'm posing a challenge to anybody on the server if you think you can hack into the vault, be my guest. Keep in mind, like I said, I am changing the combination. This is not going to be the combination once this video ends. So if you can get in here without breaking any blocks and without cheating, feel free to keep all that. But ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time I have for this episode. If you'd like to, please do not hesitate to hit that thumbs up. Sorry that my episodes are coming out a lot later than they have been. We were trying to keep it one episode a week, but now we're getting more to one episode every like 10 to 12 days or so, just because there is so much more that we have to do to get episodes out and get quality content because we've already done a lot of stuff on the server so far. So if you guys like this video, please do not hesitate to hit that thumbs up. And if you're looking forward to future episodes on this your server, then hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications. I make new videos every single week, new tutorial videos. So keep an eye out for those as well. I'm getting jumbled. I've been playing way too much Minecraft, but I will see you guys again. Thank you so much again, and bye-bye. Oh, yeah, we are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah.